When we talk about the Colts receiving core, we don't mention Naheem Hines altogether that often because, strictly speaking, he's a running back. But he's a big part of the receiving core, and he wants to put up big numbers. Good morning, everybody. Excited to see you guys. It's a little bit different from COVID, right? We can get close again. <laughs> so you're excited, you're saying? Very, very excited. New Year. Yeah. I mean, football's been football's been gone since February. Why wouldn't you be excited? It's July, and that's what we've been waiting for. Right. Uh, does this feel like? All right, let me put it this way. There, there seem that seem to be a lot of high expectations externally for your team. Do you sense that? And and do you feel like there's there's justification for that? Just I know you always have them for yourselves, but just what do you make of that? Yes, there is a there's a lot of high expectations uh, on paper. We look really really good. Defense, wow, I've been thinking about it the past month, like this is going to be a hard training camp for the offense. If we can move the ball on them, we should be able to move the ball on anybody. And, uh, you know, there's high expectations everywhere, but, you know, we'd like to keep everything internal, and we put a lot of pressures on ourselves to you go out there and be the best and hopefully win this division and go deep into the playoffs. So uh, we know there's a lot of high expectations, rightfully so, but, uh, you know, especially offense, we, we just want to pick it up and, you know, compete against that great defense over there. There's a lot of context with this, Naheem, like you've got all these quarterbacks, and we know what happened. But this is your fifth year at one state? Yes. And one playoff win and no division titles. How much does that eat at you? That And that's why you play this game, right? And you guys have a lot of talent and you just haven't done that. How much do you think about that? I think about it all the time. Uh, nobody wants to come out here and do some of the things that have happened. Some of the things that have happened to us have just been unfortunate. And uh, we thought about those and put those behind us. But uh, I think the thing with us is we're going to turn the page and look forward and we have a great opportunity ahead of us this year so hopefully the one playoff win and you know the last four years gets better and uh, you know I know that we all know that and there's some even there's a playoff game we felt like we could have won two years ago so uh it really comes down to us and executing and uh, even the last time we were in the playoffs we had a chance to win and didn't execute last year we didn't execute so really uh with us is about executing and finishing Quentin mentioned recently when Matt Ryan addresses the team it's just different can you describe at all what it's like when he stands up there? I can't describe it. You just get chills. Um, he starts talking to us. You just look at him and you're like, okay, this guy's about to lead us to a championship or to AFC South and lead us as far as we want to go. He's been there. He's been to the Super Bowl. And uh, I don't know how many guys have been on the Super Bowl. Who've been to the Super Bowl on this roster? Probably less than 10. But we're looking at those guys to lead us because we haven't been there, especially guys like myself and uh, guys who are becoming older now. We want to win. So uh, that's our goal. We want to go out here and do whatever it takes to win. From what you've seen, why is Matt the right guy to get you guys back on track and where you want to go? Um, his leadership. And then uh, even with our offense, you know, we're West Coast offense timing. He's very, very accurate. He's a quarterback who has really great timing and anticipation, and that's why we really like him. Can you feel that, like, practice-to-practice growth with developing that chemistry with Matt Ryan, you know, as you say, as a pass catcher? Oh, absolutely. And then, you know, just like those uh, those veteran guys like Phillip and Matt, like I remember just the first couple of times I threw to him, you could just – They've thrown to millions of guys before because they've just been around. So it's like even sometimes with how fast I am, quarterbacks throw the ball behind me or underthrow me, and guys like, like Matt hasn't done that. He like first day out, right on the money, and I'm like, sheesh, you know that doesn't happen often. So uh, it's awesome to have a guy like that. We're super super excited, but uh, it's our job as an offensive line and running back group to protect him. And if we do protect him, we think that he can do a lot of great things for us. You just talked about his presence when he talks off the field. What is his presence like on the field? Do, do you get that vibe there too? And oh yeah, man, Matt's, Matt's intense, but like a good intent. It's not like he's yelling at you. It's like your parent, he wants the best for you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like your parent, like he'll be like, what are you doing? Like, come on. But uh, I think with that that presence, I think it's great. It's demanding, but not super demanding. Uh, and you know that like, if, if whatever he's telling you, if you're where, where you're supposed to be, the ball's gonna be on the money. And that's really, if he wants you at 12, be at 12 because the ball will be right on your face, right on your numbers for you to catch the ball and make a play. And that's what all of us ball carriers and receivers are super excited about. You've been around a lot of quarterbacks. Is it hard to do that without being a jerk? And is it hard to do it without <clears throat> – do it like, authentically? Authentic is easy because I think, you know, like one thing about a lot of NFL quarterbacks is they are who they are. They know who they are and they've accept, accepted themselves. But I think also, too, with uh, all of those things – I think we just have to expect the best and also do our job because that guy, Matt's going to do his job, but we know that now. So it's our, it's on us to be what we're supposed to be, do what we're supposed to do, and take those coaching points. I mean, you're, I mean, you're team driven playoffs and all that, but are you a numbers guy individually? If I do this, do you have set marks for yourself? I'd like to have a career year for catches. I really don't know exactly what number I would like to have, but I like to have more than sixty-three. And uh, even if I don't, twice, I mean. oh, I had it twice. I think so. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> 260 plus. Don't question. But not last year. Yeah. No. Well, hopefully the numbers come up from last year. And uh, 
even if they don't, I, I like to have the opportunity to help this team win. And I know uh, hopefully you will. Actually, I know that Frank will put me in position to help this team win when my time when my time and number is called. And uh, when that number is called, I'll be ready to execute. Frank said if he were a fantasy owner, he would draft Naheem Hines. Shh, Frank, don't tell any secrets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's cool. Uh, it's cool to hear that. Um, obviously, you know, knowing that it puts a little target on my back, which is okay. It's a little bit more pressure. And that's fine. That's what we come here to play for. That's what we practice, and that's why I work my butt off every year. So uh, regardless if he said it or not, I know that uh, hopefully in fantasy people will pick me up anyway because hopefully I'm in for a big year. I don't really keep up with fantasy football since I've been in the NFL, but uh, hopefully I can help out some people this year. GT so. always talks about getting 1% better. It seems hard to get much better than what he did last year. So what is the next gear for him? What's that look like? Oh, JT can get better. Uh, you know, running the ball, catching the ball, uh, Jay protecting the uh, – even the best, even like we call Tom Brady to go, even he's not perfect. So uh, our goal is to get as perfect as we can get. And JT, this is his third year. It was only his second year last year. And you know, the biggest jump is from year two to year three. So I'm super excited to see the jump he makes. Uh, I'll be right there in his corner to help him out anytime and be his biggest fan and biggest supporter. Now, you know, the, how you know, were you guys two backs last year? Same time? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure, but I do know we, when we had uh, two back runs, uh, hope, I think JT had a lot of big runs. And uh, I had to go out there and block for him, which is also <laughs> a pleasure. So uh, hopefully we'll have some more sets like that. And uh, when we do, we like, to, we like to execute. It's nothing like looking on the field and seeing JT with me. We're like, okay, let's do it. This is, it's not a contest necessarily, but obviously if you get more touches, it comes at his expense and vice versa, whatever. But uh, how, much does, how much is efficiency a, a big part of the picture? We talked about that with him just because you may, you know, they're depending on the flow of the game, right? I mean, you right. may get more, he may get more. Yeah, I think with us, uh, there's enough for us all to eat. We want to win. So uh, depending on the game, there might be a game we have to throw the ball a lot more. And there's some games where we might go 13 personnel and run it. And obviously, I'm not 13 personnel running back <laughs> or the goal line running back. So uh, I think with that, it's just us, uh, like the running back group, since I've been here for five years, we've been always unselfish. Whoever's out there, because there's normally one guy, we support them. When we see something on the field, we let them know immediately. If there's something I see, I tell JT or whoever will be in there. And that's also always been, there's no been no secrets in that room. And I think that's why we've been great. Thanks, Naheem. That's Naheem Hines. What a great dude. What, what a lot, you know, we talk about the Colts culture quite a bit. Naheem Hines is a great representative of that culture. This is a team that kind of runs by culture. And Naheem Hines, team first, but he wants his too.